How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of How To. So today's episode we are going to be building ourselves something that tracks. So we're going to start with a basic seat. Now this is the way that I've figured out how to build something that tracks an object or tracks something that moves. It's a little difficult because the distance sensors behave a certain way. If you know how to use logic, I'm sure you can get them to behave a little different. You know, if one sees this, then do that, and blah, blah, blah. I just basically use the sensors straight up vanilla style. So we're ju I'm just going to show you how I do it. And uh, you can take it from there, modify it how you like, and uh, see if there's anything else you can do to change it to make it work better. Tough to make something like a missile or a torpedo or something that tracks simply because these sensors have a limited range and they also have a limited width range. If you haven't seen the glitches video, check it out up above here. The glitch that we're going to use is using our piston, so we're just going to stick one of these pistons on either side. I'm not going to use it at this moment. So first of all, we're going to take our sensor. We want to select the maximum distance on range. And we have nothing for it to actuate when it actually gets triggered. So we are going to put, let's go with a couple of small mini jets like this, like left control, double click on those to select them both, remove any controls that we have on them. I like to remove the controls just in case I'm in the seat and if I'm trying to steer or something it could end up affecting its performance because it's got other controls on it, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. But if it's going to be an auto tracker then that means there's nobody in the seat and it should be able to still function properly. So we want to make sure that all of our connections are connected to things that have no controls. So this front one is obviously going to be connected to our two mini thrusters so we can build that into the world and it sees us and turns on those mini thrusters which is all fine and dandy but as you can see it's not enough actual thrust to make it move you also got to remember the height of whatever it is that you're trying to track a player character I think is three or four tall uh, and uh, anything else will track above that but if you're against the ground it's gonna see small elevations in hills or landscapes that's why we're in the test zone here make sure everything is nice and flat so you want to keep that in mind, what map you're going to be using it on or the train you're using it in and the range at which it detects. So it's usually best to use it on something flat like on the aircraft carrier or in the test zone like this. So once we have that there, we'll go back into build mode here. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this out like this and copy one out the other side, putting it on these pistons, putting it to the outside like this. We want to select these pistons, again, remove our controls and we want to have it start all the way at zero and we're also going to need well we don't need them quite yet but you can see how those will glitch in like that they'll sit side by side but they're not actually glitched into each other so what we want to do is we now we can just move this in and move this in and then build that and you'll see that they glitch into each other so we can turn three three sensors into a two sensor width so that allows for two of the sensors to be going off at the same time, which adds allows it to have more response when it's seeing something that's moving by in front of it. It'll actually be able to trigger those things more frequently than just one, two. It'll be like one, two, three, one, two, three. So more trigger points means more accuracy, more following. So to make this slippery, we're just gonna take a wheel, and this is another glitch that I didn't put in that video, but it is still functioning. Oh, we'll use the uh, small wheels take wheels and put them on their sides. These will have zero friction as well when they're on their sides. So you can build that in. And you can see it'll just keep sliding. So maybe that's another idea. Maybe I'll make like a curling game. But there's no friction, so it, it won't actually stop. It's just gonna keep doing that. Help! Run away, run away! Hey, hey, hey! So as you can see, it'll keep turning like that. Every now and then it'll see, but it's gonna keep on spinning and rotating. So that's half of the battle with anything that's tracking as well. If it's not pinned down to the ground or weighted down to stay still in one place, it's just gonna wanna drift like that. So you gotta try and find a balance between the friction and the slipperiness of your build of however it's gonna follow. So whether that be using motors and wheels or using something like a hover pad, uh, even using gimbals that can activate when something sees it in the front so let's see if we can get rid of all these wheels and we'll put a gimbal on the front here just to lift the front a bit a little less friction select all of our sensors they lift the gimbal when something is detected now it's flat on the ground and see how that gimbal lifts up the front end so those mini thrusters can actually move it 
and when nothing is detected it's not going to be sliding around. So it's a couple of different ways you can work around with that. So let's add a couple of more sensors to this so we can get a little better range. Let's make sure we're all at 50 here, yep. Once you can track things straight on, you need to worry about how you're going to turn. So I usually use helicopter engines because they're strong enough to do the job and they're adjustable. So you can adjust the strength of them so it turns. As you're adding weight to it or taking weight off, you can adjust your turning so that it's not overturning or oversteering. So again, on these, we want to remove our controls. Nada nada, we'll keep them at five to start with. So this one here is going to spin because we're connected not on the uh, we're connected on the actual middle section, not the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom are actually going to spin. So this one we will connect on this one. So this one on this side will spin this way. This sensor will spin this one. So we can simply check that by standing in front on either side and see if it turns the right way. So that one is turning it the wrong way and the reason is because both of our helicopter uh, engines right now are currently sitting in the same position so they're both rotating the same way. The green or the default direction is spinning the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one over here and we're going to tell it that its speed is going to be minus 5 rather than 5 itself. So that should cause this one to turn this way and this side to turn this way. So one helicopter engine, as you can see how it's overturning. So we're going to be adding a little more weight, so we're going to, we'll leave it at five. We could set that down to three, and then it won't rotate as much, and it won't turn so much, so it won't oversteer. But we're going to be adding more weight to the front, so we'll just leave that where it is. So we've got those three glitched into the front. Now we need something on the like a 45 degree angle, but the problem with that is that a sensor sitting at a 45 degree angle is not going to be very sensitive, I guess to uh, any motion that's happening around it. So we'll take a small hinge, we'll set it in here, and we want this to rotate on the green arrow, we want that to rotate back and forwards to cover like a 45 degree angle in here on the 45 compared to your bot itself. So we'll copy that out and swing on around to the other side as well. And we'll just copy out another sensor drop it on there. So we'll just set the timing on these small hinges to swing back and forth. So we'll say like a one second with a one second pause, one second duration, one second pause. Speed we can leave at one. Angle we'll set to say 45. And we want to remove the controls on those because we're going to use a additional sensor on the back that's just facing downwards. Down here. And that is what's going to actuate our looped hinges. So let's build that in. As we can see one of our hinges is turning the wrong way. We want that on the green and we want to make sure that these outside ones now as you can see they're not connected to anything. So the programming here on the 45 we're going to use these for our turning. So we want that one to turn this way, this one to turn that way as well and with the turning we can activate the far side thruster to help us rotate around. And let's try that. So as you can see, it senses us and it does trigger the thruster. But it's not enough to, it doesn't stay triggered long enough to actually spin it around. We can deal with that by telling this as well to lift our gimbal. These outside ones can lift our gimbal. And let's see if that gives us enough, just enough lift. Oh, ha! <laughs> and you might want to always constantly make sure that your distance is set to 50. Or else the only thing it's going to be tracking is its own shadow. Let's try this again. So we got some lift there. So see, one sensor just doesn't trigger whatever it is that it's triggering long enough for it to do anything. Whereas if you have multiples like this, glitched together, you see how that'll stay together, and then all you gotta do is, oh, hey, 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 hey. Hold down, buddy. So now what we wanna do is we wanna simply add another sensor to these angled sensors here. 
we can either pop one straight up like this. What I try and do is move it over one so that we're compensating for this blank spot, this one square space so we don't have an empty gap. So we'll copy this one out again, up, over, and back. We'll make sure that it's actually connected to what it's supposed to be connected to, which is this, this, and this. This one over here is the opposite. It's already connected to those. Let's build that in. So you can see we have a little bit more action. It wants to turn a bit more, so I think if it once it starts moving, we're still not getting enough movement for it to actually follow us. We can our gimbal a little bit just so it's not, or you know, it's even better than that. Yeah, we'll weaken it a little bit. We'll put it down to like 0 0.6. We are going to add a couple more mini thrusters because we can. So we're going to make this, we're going to also use them like stabilizers to make them a little wider. Put them on the outside here. And again, we want to remove our controls and we want to have our side ones here. Don't want them to activate this, but that far one is good, yes. And this one and this one. Tisa one. And that should be good. Let's try that. Gimbal is not lifting as high as it should, so we'll set that back up. One. Can you see me? Can you see me now? So, as you can see, it's kind of counter steering back and forth. So, a way to help counter that is to have your center one here actually activate both of your helicopter engines. They'll spin in opposite directions and stabilize itself. It almost gives it like a dead zone. Come on, buddy. Catch me if you can. So you can see how it's starting to slowly be able to hone in and move. It can now detect things at an angle this way, but it just won't. It's still too much friction on the ground for it to actually turn. So again, we can deal with that by adding some frictionless sideways wheels. Always remember to try and keep it as level as possible or else your sensors are going to be reading the ground off in the distance or they won't be reading anything because they can't see the ground. See, now that we don't have that friction there, well, now we got the gimbal lifting the front. But as we continue placing sensors around the outside, it will definitely have the ability to... Yeah, see, it's just out of range now, so we're going to add a couple of more sensors on the outside but we're going to angle these ones this way just connect them right on the end here and those let's make sure they're actually connected to stuff yep now when we're our arms oh, 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 slow down slow down pilgrim okay uh time to get rid of that gimbal i think a rat right, reckon we don't need that if we got slipper wheels right right Oh yeah, hey, hey, oh yeah, boy, it's, it's tracking me now. See, it's still so little friction. Okay, get over here. Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, uh, I think I see the problem. I right, reckon that these here angle back and are seeing these. So, what we gonna do is we're gonna put these up here. We're just gonna move these out the way so it's not interfering. Oh, wow, we got a question mark. Oh, all of a sudden our wheels ain't connected to nothing. All right, go under here then. Well, I wonder if that's going to make them spin around. Yep, it is. Look at that. That's all right, though. That's all right. That's an added bonus. So you can see the ones that we added on the side there. Oh, of course, got to reset the range. It's weird. Sometimes the programming will get copied. Sometimes not so much. Okay, they're both at 50. Yep, that's good. I'm going to add another one to increase the range. Same thing on my other side. Yoke's like that. All right. Can you see me? Can you see me? Oh, hey, wow, you're just gung-ho. I think we got too much forward thrust now as, as, a pair, as opposed to having rotational thrust because yeah you see when it when it triggers on the side it just wants to go forward real fast or we could change the angle on our original small hinges to 
to less than 45. Let's do uh, let's do 35, and let's see if that makes it settle down just a wee bit. Oh 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 oh! What's it? Oh, I think you know what I think it's hitting. I think it's hitting them there helicopter engines. That's what's happening. So, uh, 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 we're going to just move this one and this one right up here. Like that. <laughs> just like that, we're going to move them. And now we're going to try that. And hopefully they're not hitting them helicopter engines no more. Where you going, Clem? Get over here. Oh, I, oh, yeah, me, maybe it's them spinning wheels in the back. All right, so everything seems to be connected all proper, like. Except for, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of these spinning wheels on the back. You can keep them if you like, but I just think it's kind of weird. So I'm just going to add a deuce here and just drop them out a little bit on angle. Make it just a little bit more stable. Let's try that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you can, where you have those individual sensors, you can make those glitched sensors as well. It's just a matter of trial and error as far as finding a position to put them in. Well, it seems to be able to track me now. It sees me anyways. So you can see with the helicopter engines there, the rotational speed of when it senses. You can up those, the number up or down, if you need it to rotate a little bit more or a little bit less, if it's spinning too much. Too much spinning. I think it does have a little too much spin, so let's uh, reduce our helicopter engines from... Oh, right. Got to remember, one is at 5, one is at minus 5. So let's go minus 4. Let's do minus 3. Let's, let's do minus 3. And this one here is just going to be at 3. And then let's see if that gives it just enough steering to track what it needs to track. Can you see me, Clem? Yeah, but you just ain't turning far enough. So now see, it's a little too weak. Let's go minus four and four. All right, we're gonna try. We're gonna try that. Where you going? Get over here. You're supposed to be following me, man. Oh, did that actually see me? I'm not far away. So you might be able to make like homing missiles that slowly track in on a target from a far away with like something that's sitting still. But I'm not sure, I don't think you'd ever be able to make something that actually tracks a moving target. Because you can just move way too fast, faster than the sensors can react, right? And your build just ends up getting huge after you continuously add more and more and more sensors to try and get it to actually do what you want it to do. So I'm a little curious now that we got this going on. If we take these here wheels off, so it ain't sliding around, does it have enough strength to still track us? Let's see if I take one of these here pistons, put it on the inside, and I move this out like that. That's going to like out to here. And now, if this here is set to start at zero, okay, and I want to reduce the angle of these. Let's try 30. We'll do 30. Magic 30. So let's see if this works and we can glitch these two together. Uh, that that don't that don't seem to want to be working too well. But I wants to do it. I wants to glitch. Uh uh uh. We're about we like this. We're about like that. Oh, it likes that. So we got a sideways sensor glitched into a straightforward sensor. All right, all right. Now we also got lots of drag on the ground because we got all kind of extra things. So let's go back to the gimbal control system. And all of these is going to activate the gimbal except the one on the belly here or else this thing's just going to fly away. All right, let's try that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side that we did here. Let's try that again. Make sure everything is functional. It is. Now, 
this is where we want might want to make our helicopter engines again back up to minus five so much time tweaking and see if that gives us enough rotation what we want it to do is basically to spin us around enough that it, the other sensors can take over as well right we don't want any dead spots see we've got quite a bit of a dead spot here right here it doesn't see nothing it don't see squat and that's not good we gotta find a way to fix that that's what we gotta do we can make them maybe angle a little bit more if we can find a place to uh well we did move our yes yeah, it gets in inside there so maybe hey he we can take these lift them up off the ground like this maybe put them right out here maybe that'll give us less friction on the ground as well as a little bit more steerability because we have our thrusters out further to the side all right let's try that that's not bad a little less friction on the ground still have quite a big dead zone at that 45 so that's the hardest part with tracking devices is uh, trying to get it to see all the way around clearly oh yeah okay now you see me right come on come on Clem so in this situation I would either add a couple of more mini thrusters or I would add something underneath it that has drag but not so much so there's not so many blocks actually dragging on the ground now the only thing that's going to be touching the ground is this very edge corner, and there'll be far, far less friction, so we should get more effect out of our our sensors, in theory. So it does see. It spins. It spins itself. Yes, yes. Over here. Over here. Still not enough. Still not enough. All right. Well, maybe we've got enough sensors on there now, so we'll get rid of all of these. Maybe we got enough now. What if I to use a bigger tire, like the motorcycle wheel? What if I put that on there? Is that gonna be better? Hey, over here, buddy. Or now that we've got super slippery mode, it's just so slippery it keeps on spinning. I think it's these damn wheels. It's too bouncy. Maybe we just need to lift it a little bit more with like uh, 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 maybe another gimbal. All right, let's try it with two gimbals. Oh Jesus! Seems a little aggressive. You should not be able to lift your bot off the ground. Oh, I think that's what the problem is. So let's just try this. Let's not put them at the front. Let's just try rotating them up here on top. Try to put them about in the middle. Ooh, that's even worse. What about that? How do you like that? Still lots of drag though. Maybe we need more thrust. So let's copy these ones out and put them ones back down here that we had before so I don't think they was in the way well you're about to find out anyways let's try increasing these just a little bit a 0 0.7 just for giggly shits let's set these back up full one and set these up one more as well so minus seven and seven now you can kind of set the same thing up with wheels and hinges, steering hinges. The only downside with that is that you're going to end up using logic because the steering hinges will want to turn their default direction. And if you want them to turn the other direction, then you'll need like another logic gate or something that is actually going to tell it to turn on the red arrow rather than the green. So it's kind of the same thing, a little trickier to set up. You usually have an engine dedicated to each wheel so that you can power each wheel for turning left or right or both of them to go forwards. But that is the basics on how I make a tracking device. It's a lot of fine tuning. Yeah, see that's 
too much gimbals. Too many gimbal. I think our uh, helicopter engines might be a little strong as well. You can see we're slowly honing in on the right amount of friction for the amount of lift that we have for the amount of time that our sensors are detecting us. That's basically what you want it to do, that little back and forth action where it zeroes in on its target. So that's how I make a tracking device. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm sure if you use logic, it'd probably be easier. But trying to do it as vanilla as possible or as simple as possible, you basically end up with something like this with a couple of more sensors on it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you guys out, let you know a little bit more on building a tracking device. I know a lot of you try to build tracking torpedoes or would like to build like a, a tracking missile of some kind, which is almost impossible, I'd say if not just because of the range or because of wonderful things like that. Cool. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button. Leave a comment, and we will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.